simplicity of just loving on God. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is good. Amen. We we lowered the lights down today to try to set it just a special move. We know the fourth is this time. Just trying to get a special move going for this service today. Actually, our lights aren't working, but uh, they will be. Amen. Amen. We had a good time in Sunday school this morning. We talked about Manasseh. Y'all know who Manasseh was? Lord. If there's ever been an evil man to live, Brother Gary, shh, it was him. Let's see what all he did with it. He uh, took his kids, burned them in the fire, killed a bunch of innocent people all throughout the land of Jerusalem. He set up in the temple, tore down things out of the temple that represented God and raised up things to his gods that he served. And not only that, he led all the people to serve other gods. And that's just some of the things that he did that's mentioned. He was evil among evil among evil. They say that he had the prophet Isaiah sawed in half. 
Juanita said that they would stick him in a tree trunk or they put him in between boards and saw him in half. You think how evil you got to be, Pastor, to take a prophet and saw him in half. To take beautiful little babies, burn them in the fire. To be so bold in yourself, to take everything out of the represented God out of the church house and to raise up poles and different things to these other gods. And you think that's bad? You think how in the world could somebody like that ever come to their senses? But as the story goes, <laughs> this is awesome, praise God. But as the story goes, he was led around by a golden thing, I believe, in his nose and all these different things. But he humbled himself before God and prayed. And the lesson today said, God says, Do I have delight in killing the wicked? There is none for the Lord. But his interest was in grace and mercy. All he had to do, all he had to do was humble himself before the Lord God Jehovah. Amen. You ain't now sin the grace of God according to what I read. There's hope for everybody. I don't care how wicked you are. All you have to do is humble yourself. Think about it. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. What a story. And to my mind, he should have died countless times ago. All the innocent people's lives that he influenced. But yet he received mercy. Amen. Can you see yourself there? All the times you said no to God. All the times you rejoiced in evil. All the times that you thought you was living the life. But yet he allowed you to see how beautiful he really is. Amen. Amen. He's good. Amen. Amen. He's good. Amen. He has no rejoice in the, in the death of the wicked, he says. But he calls out to the humble. We need some prayers this morning for Betty Wallace, recovering from a broken knee and shoulder. We need the prayers for Liam, heart transplant complications. Billy Tolliver, to find a good church in Huntington. Dave Seaman, dizziness and weakness. Eddie Owens, to get back in church. Marty Trent, Donnie Blankenship. Donna Mauger, the Counts family. Cletus Clay. Cook family, Jeff Cook, shoulder surgery, Howard Cook, or Harold Cook with cancer, uh, Donna Blankenship with cancer, Becky Smith with kidney stones, Courtney Smith with gallbladder surgery, Rick Lisa healing, Charles Frazier, liver cancer, Michelle Hash for healing, Alan Starr, Billy Hughes with headaches, I believe, and also the church member Joseph Porter, possible biopsy on his leg. They said something maybe cancer. I'm not for sure on that 100%, but that's what she said. The young boy's 14 years old, hangs out with Lance and the Ronnie man's been there at church back here in the sound booth. I think you've probably seen him a couple times, but 14 years old. Let's go to Seabird. So uh, a, lot, a lot of serious stuff. Amen. Amen. As we pray, let's just pray for a humble spirit for our community, for our church, and be where we need to be. Amen. So if you will, we'll just gather around the altar this morning. Go before the King of Grace. And for your goodness today, Father. We're so thankful for another day of life. So thankful that you blessed us today with the gift of life. By when you got us up this morning, the blood was still running, warmly through our veins, and our body was still functioning, Lord, and we still had a mind to reason. And Lord, I'm just so thankful today for the blessing of life. So thankful today for the hope that I have in me today, and that is Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I'm thankful and grateful for this living hope that I have today. A hope that will not die. And I give you praise today. I, I'm so thankful this morning to be able to gather today in, in your house. Be able to gather here today with people of like precious faith. I'm so thankful and grateful for that. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I, I'm thankful today that, that we can gather in your house. Thankful today that we can gather with your people. Thankful that we can come here today to worship the living God. That we have the awesome privilege today to worship. And to know that before we ever enter this worship service today, we know that, that you are seeking those that worship you. We know today that, that you're reaching out to those, that you're looking for those that are that are worshiping you in spirit and in truth. And I, I just pray today that, that, that your people in this house today will do exactly that. That when we enter this meeting in worship, 
who enter this meeting, opening our hearts up to you and loving you as you have loved us. Help us, I pray this day, that we can choose this avenue of worship, that we can demonstrate our love back to you, a love that you've given us unconditionally, a love that you've given us, that I know that, that look beyond our faults, and beyond our imperfections, it's all the greatest need of our life, and that was the need of a Savior. And I'm so thankful today, Jesus, that you came, gave your life so that we could have, have life and, and have it more abundant, that we, we give you praise today, we do. And Father, I, I bring every petition today with that prayer list. I know every name that went up today, you know, because I know you're the God that created them. And I know you're the God that I know that knows what they need in their life. I'm so thankful that we serve a God today that is so well acquainted with us that the scripture says that the very hairs of our head are up. I'm so thankful that you are that well acquainted with us that 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 that, that even you know every sparrow that falls to the ground. The Bible says, and I am so thankful that we are of much more value than a sparrow. And I give you praise today. I do. I'm so thankful and grateful today for your for your unending love that I know that it is truly unconditional today. Holy Spirit, we want to acknowledge our need of you today in this house because we know that without you, without you, this this meeting will be only a, a social meeting without you. But if you'll come, I know you'll make the difference in this gathering today. If you'll come and your presence will abide in this house, I, I know the great things to be accomplished for the kingdom of God. So we invite you to come today. Holy Spirit, we need you to come. You're our helper today. We can't do anything without you. We want to acknowledge our need of you today. Come, we you? And help us, I pray, as a, as a body of believers, that, that we can create the atmosphere that you could have liberty in. Psalm just said that you dwell in the praises of your people. You inhabit the praises you live there. Today, I pray that you'll open our hearts up and begin to enter in this, enter in this thing called praise and, and begin to move in the realm of worship that we can truly, truly invite your presence into and you will come. And I pray today every believer will choose that avenue today. I pray for every need in this house today. Some not even mention what prayer is today, but I know that you know every one of us. You know us by name. You know our habits. You know where we go, what we do. You know, except you know our thoughts are far off. There's nothing you don't know about us. So I pray today that we'll not come here with any kind of pretenses, but we will come knowing that we serve God that knows the very thoughts of our mind afar off, you know, before we ever even think of them. So I pray today that we'll open our hearts up here today in this house, that we can receive what you have for us here today. For we come today with the spirit of expectation. We come today not out of some ritual, not out of some thing because it's a good thing to do, but because we love you, and because we want to hear from you, and because today we need you. So I trust and pray that you will hear the cry of the heart of your people today as we invite you to come to this meeting today. We need you to come and help these your people today. And when all this is said and done, my prayer to know is that we be in the presence of the Most High God. So come, come today. And we'll give you praise for everything that's accomplished in this house today. We will give you praise for it. For we ask you in Jesus, mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just, if you would, get ready to see the Lord's eyes and offering it to Him this morning. We have two offerings this morning. The first one will be our tithes and offering unto the Lord for this house, and the second one would be unto the food for angels. Amen. So if you have anything to bless them with, they'll be blessed. Amen. Brother Gary, bless the offering for us this morning, if you would, please.
and I thought about where my sister had surgery last week and we was all gathered around her bed and the doctor came in and he said uh, he looked at her and he said now aren't we ready and she said yeah and he said well then let's pray what a declaration he made right there he prayed for her he prayed for us he prayed for the Lord to guide his hands I mean he didn't ask permission he made a declaration he just said well if we're ready then let's pray and I love that do we make that declaration when we go out in the world you know you can make a declaration and shout it with a whisper a whisper if you just say I love the Lord and he is worthy worthy of everything and everything that I do he's worthy if we'll just take just pray for somebody right there on the spot don't ask their permission can I pray for you you just start praying and make that declaration well, I'm making my declaration. I'm shouting it to every nation. I bless the God of my salvation. He's worthy, worthy. For the God I serve is great and mighty. He is for me, you can be against me. I praise Him with the song of victory. He's
adjustment for every single word that we have spoken. One of these days we'll all stand before the Lord. The reason for everything we've done and what I've done is trust in Jesus, my great deliverer, my strong defender.
talks about how when he comes back. Hallelujah. And we look forward to that day when he takes us to be with him. Amen. But he is here even with us now. Hallelujah. For he promises us what two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst. He is here among us this morning. And he is walking among us this morning. And if we would be like the little woman with the issue of blood. Who pressed through the crowd so that she could just touch the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. If we would press through whatever it is that we have to press through this morning. Whatever thoughts we're having. Whatever problems we're having. Whatever the opinions of other people. If we would just press through to touch him this morning. We would receive something that no money can buy. Hallelujah. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find it not too busy to hear your heart cry. He is passing by this moment. Oh, don't Whoa! 
on the sea and they were so fearful, hallelujah, that their boat was going to sink and they were going to drown, hallelujah, but Jesus came walking upon the very thing that they feared, walking upon the waters, hallelujah, and the Bible says that he, he stepped into the boat and when he stepped into the boat, everything calmed down, the winds and the waves, they ceased, would you reach out and touch him this morning, if you're in a storm this morning and you feel like your boat is going to sink and you're going
stop and question why Matthew wrote follow Jesus as he
of him passing by and because of you reaching out and touching the Savior you're a new creature in Christ Jesus that's good isn't it you'll never know him as the sea walker until you're in the greatest storm of your life and you know that if he don't show up you will die. Amen. You will die. Amen. You'll never know Him. You'll never know Him until you get to that place to where you really know if He had not showed up and passed by when He did, you would not be alive and in your sound mind. Amen. That's why it's important when He passes by through His Precious Holy Spirit. That's when you must respond. That's when faith puts action on what it believes. And it responds. And if nobody else sees your faith, Jesus sees your faith. We are so reluctant just to sit in our complacency and just allow Him to pass on by. I found out one thing that most of the time, 99% of the time, if anything happens in the house of God, I hear what happens. I hear me. And I also found out down through the years that the most abused piece of furnishings in the house of God is that old altar. For some reason, God's people don't want to use it. But when we get back to where we weep between the porch and the altar, God will do the prayers of His people. God will be dead to mine. For He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, Then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Until we get back to where we humble ourselves and turn, He's not going to hear. But He said, when my people do that, He's not talking to the world. He said, my people, my, my, my children, my people, if they'll humble themselves, pray 
seek my face. Humble, pray, seek my face. Humble, pray, seek my face. You can't seek his face, but first of all, you humble yourself. And my people shall humble themselves if they, if they will pray and seek my face. You'll not seek his face if you're not praying until first of all, you humble yourself before him. When we humble ourselves in his presence and before him, then we begin that we're on the right track. Then he begins to move in our lives, begins to forgive us, and begins to heal our land. Our land, man. That's our homes, our marriages, our children. Our land. Our nation. Our community. Wow. If the land is in a mess, it's because God's people's in a mess. We're responsible for the land. We are. Yeah, we are. It ain't, a, it ain't the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, the house. Hey, God's people are responsible for the land. Amen. But I really believe this. I believe in these last days God raising up an army. I do, I believe that. God raising up a people that are that are that are tired of church per se coming together and just having a little little leaven to you. Three little three little three point three point sermon and sing a few songs and have a little emotional thing and go out and nobody change. God raised up a people says those days are over. Those days are over. We're after the glory. We're after the presence. We're after the real. We're after God. We're after His presence. That's again, I don't need another sermon. I don't need another song. I need His presence. I need the wind of God to begin to blow in my life. I need the wind of God to begin to blow in this house. We need the wind of God to blow in this nation. We need our president to hear the wind and to feel the wind. And the wind of God begin to blow in people's lives until our nation is saved, our land is healed, our people are healed. We were in the moving in the right direction when we can humble ourselves Amen. without any fear. Could care less what you think about me. Right. Yes. I'm working on something a lot bigger than you are. Amen. I'm working on something a lot bigger than I am. And it's going to take me to the place where I have to humble myself before Him each and every day. And turn from what I'm doing that I know is not right. Pray and seek the face of God. Then He'll begin to hear. He'll begin to heal us. Bring restoration back. Begin to restore. After all, He is the God of restoration. He, he's the only one that can restore you what you have, you have given away and what the enemies came to take from you. He's the only one that can restore that. Amen. And you can say, man, if you want to, it don't make no difference anyway because you ain't got enough sense to get it back. You didn't have enough sense to keep it, so how are you going to get it back? I tell you, the only one that can get it back is, is the one that can get it back and give it back to you and, make it, and, and allow you to keep it. Yes. Amen. Just like Job. Job was blessed up before his trouble. But Job knew how to hold on to God, no matter what. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go. We're going to children's church. Let's go. I'm going to get started. I'm going to get you out here before the fourth end. Let's go to children's church. Everybody going downstairs to children's church? We gone. Hallelujah. The nursery is open. Children's church is open. We just got things going on here. That's just so, so good. Amen. All right. Praise God. Now, I knew the crowd would be down today. But you're here. Are you? <laughs> Are you here? Yes. Well, look at your neighbors and neighbor, I'm here. You need to convince your neighbor, but they're still looking at you. Amen. God is good. Greatly to be praised. Is he not? Amen. I tell you what, I made up my mind. Nobody else prays him, I'm gonna praise him. I don't need I don't need no music to praise him. I don't need no. I don't need anybody to cheerlead me on to praise him. He's been too good to me not to praise him. And if I understand his word, which I do understand this part of his word, Psalm is said that he inhabits the praises of his people. If you want God to show up, praise him. I said, if you want God to show up, praise him. You don't have to be in a church house to praise him. Praise is a lifestyle. It's not something you do here on Sunday. It's a lifestyle, 24-7. It's a lifestyle you live. You praise Him. I don't need a reason to praise Him. I praise Him because of who He is. All I've got to do is look at my life of where I once was and where I am now. And man, I just, I just have to praise Him. 
You know, you ain't here, that's all right. Y'all gonna make it hard on me today, that's all right. I got the fourth, I got hot dogs coming up to have some more, so I can preach through this, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got something to look forward to, glory to God. I got the hot dogs coming, hamburgers are coming, watermelon, the camera are coming. So I just stay here till I get tired and we'll go home. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. Praise God. All right. Amen. You have your Bibles. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 3. Jeremiah 17 is where we'll start today. Proverbs chapter number 3. If you find Psalm right in the middle of your book, you're one book away from Proverbs. You get to Proverbs, you're about four books away from Jeremiah. Or three books, four books, something like that. You got Proverbs, then you got what? Uh, you got uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, and then you got the Song of Solomon, you got Isaiah, and then you'll come in with Jeremiah. All right. Proverbs chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter number 17 is where we will begin today. So Proverbs 3, Jeremiah 17. Amen. Praise God. Y'all pray for us. Pray for this. Uh, uh, <laughs> our chandeliers went out today. I don't know why we've lost power to the chandeliers. But Martin Terry worked hard to change all them bulbs. And they were so bright and looked so pretty. And now we can't get them to work. Now if we shoot all them bulbs out, they'll probably work. But we're going to hang in there. We're going to get them fixed some way. I don't know how yet, but we're going to believe the Lord to show us how to fix it. Amen? I may not have the ability, but I have the one in me that has the ability. I may not have the know-how, but I have one in me that knows how. That's all right. I have the all-knowing one in me. What say you? You do? Good then. All right. Proverbs 3, Jeremiah 17. Now, for some of you in this room today, this is going to be some new stuff. All right, so I, I just pray to help you. But for others, it, it, it'll, it'll be more like a refresher course to stir the Word up and to stir it up in your spirit. You remember what Paul told Timothy, his son in the faith, in the, in the second letter he wrote to Timothy? He said, Timothy, I, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you. And I, I, I just want to, I want to stir some stuff up in this building today. Stir it up, man, and 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 and, and begin to allow the the flames of the Spirit of God to burn once again in your life. To get some things stirred up, it's things you already know, things I got to stir back up in order to get the fire burning in that area of your life. Got me? Got me? So let the Word speak to you today. Let it speak to you. Let the Word renew your mind. I don't care how much you know. Let it renew your mind. If you're, if you, if you're not teachable, you'll never be taught. If you know it all, you don't know nothing. So renew your mind today in the Word of God. Today we're going to be talking about trust is a must. Trust is a must. And I thought about that and I thought about the hour that we're living in. In the hour that we are living in, we must be in trust. Trust is a must in this hour. You have to learn how to trust your Commander-in-Chief, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, through the blessed, precious Holy Spirit. Whether you realize or not, we are all in a warfare. It is a spiritual warfare. And we cannot fight this warfare with carnal weapons, fleshly weapons, because it's a, it's a spiritual warfare. Are you listening to me? Amen. You and I are going into combat against the best trained elite troops of a savage enemy. Satan and all his hordes of hell. And they have come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you and I, whether you realize or not, you and I are called of God. And we are God's frontline assault force. You have an enemy who is doing his dead level best to destroy you and to destroy your family. In this, in, in, in this critical all out, no holds barred war. Hear this, in this preacher. Satan will dispatch hell's choicest personnel to bring you down. And if you're going to make and you're going to live in victory, then you and I are going to have to learn how to trust our Commander-in-Chief, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what He said in His Word, and what He spoke in His Word. 
You and I are going to have to get to the place where we like Job. After Job had lost everything he had, his wealth, the Bible says he was the richest man in the East, but not in a matter of hours he became the poorest man in the East. He lost his wealth, he lost his health, he lost his family, all ten of his children died, and in the midst of the, uh, uh, of the most fierce part of the battle, Job stood upright, and Job spoke these words. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. There's going to be times and seasons in your life where you do not understand God. And the only thing that will get you through is your trust in a God that has never failed. Never. And the good news is, he never will fail. Because He's Jehovah God. And in Him, there listen, there is no other God other than our God, Jehovah. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 is where we're going to begin today. You got your Bible, turn to Proverbs chapter number 3 as we talk about trust is a must. Somebody say trust yes. is a must. Yes. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, very familiar scripture. Some of the proverb writers say, Trust in the Lord with how much your heart? Oh. How much? Oh. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all in how many ways? Oh. Somebody say how many ways? Oh. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Now my question to you is again today. If all don't mean all, what does all mean? All means all. All means all. All means all. Now I can go through this crowd today and I can get a microphone and I can go to every one, each one of you that are born again in this house and, and, and I can ask you are, you, are you trusting the Lord? And every probably 99.9% of everybody in this building would say yes, preacher, I trust in the Lord. Okay? I'm glad you do. How many, how many of you can say, preach, I'm trusting the Lord. Come on, put your hand in. Put your hand in. Come on, some of you lying. Don't we? Come on. Come on, put your hand I'm not going to look at you. I promise I'll see you, but I don't see your hand in. Trust in the Lord. I think most of us, probably all of us in this building is born again. If you'll be honest, you'll raise your hand. Some of you don't want to participate. That's all right, too. It don't make me no difference. I'm going to go on and go, go on top of you. But let me ask you something. Well, let me make this thing. We've all heard that, most of us have heard that scripture in Proverbs 3 that I just read. And we really believe that we are in trouble with trust the Lord. Okay, let's just see now. Let's see if your trust resembles the biblical trust that we are to have in God. Let's see if, 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 if you really trust the Lord with all your heart and with In all your ways, you're acknowledging Him. Yeah. Let's see if your trust looks like the biblical trust. Because I ain't really worried about my trust. Or your trust. I want to see if my trust lines up with the biblical yeah. look of trust. If, 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 I can, if I can get my trust on the level to where it looks like the Bible when I read it, then I'm home on the right track of trusting God. Am I making any sense in the building? Okay, good. Here we go. You with me thus far? Okay, good. Jeremiah chapter number 17. Let's, let's go. Let's look, let's look what real biblical trust looks like. Let me show you the result of a person who will do that. That will trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Here we go. Jeremiah chapter number 17. And you get up here where I don't see you yet. Verse number, verse number 7, verse number 8. Jeremiah says in the King James, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Listen to this now. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreadeth out her roots by the rivers, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be care careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Alright? Look, look at the Amplified on the screen. Verse 7. Amplified says this. Most blessed is the man who believes in, trusts in, relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confidence the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by waters that spread out 
its roots by the river, and it shall not see and fear when he comes, but its leaves shall be green. It shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, nor shall it cease yielding fruit. Look at this now. Look at this. Look at this. The person who trusts, who puts his trust in the Lord, the Bible reveals to us that that, that person will be blessed or he will, he will have an empowerment to be successful, to have success in his life. The Bible says that the man or the woman who puts, who believes in, trusts in, relies on the Lord, that person, the person that will learn how to trust in God will be blessed in that trust. Picture this. He will be like the tree planted by the water that spreads its roots out by the river and will not fear when he comes. Its leaf shall be green and he will not be anxious or full of care in the year of drought. Let me break that down where we can understand it. The man or woman who puts his trust in the Lord will not fear when he comes. When the stock market fails, when the job, when, 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 when they come back on the job and, and I'm not making now the money that I used to make. The man or woman who puts their trust in the Lord will not fear when he comes. They, the man or woman who puts their trust in the Lord will not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought. He will will not worry and be full of care when things begin to dry up in their life. When things were going upward, you were good, but now things begin to be downward. But the man or woman that puts their trust in the Lord will not be anxious of the cares of this whole world when things begin to dry up in their life. See, God said, the man or woman that learns how to trust in me, he will be like that tree that is planted by the water and it's roots began to spread out along that river bank. In other words, on the screen, he will have some holding power. The man or woman that puts their trust in the Lord will be like that tree that's planted by the waters and its roots are all spread out along that river bank and that they will, they will have holding power. It doesn't matter how windy it gets. It doesn't matter how stormy it is. It doesn't matter what comes their way. They will Will not be shaken. They will have holding power, and they will have no dry season in their life. Does your trust resemble that? Do you have the biblical trust? Remember the last time some little demon poked his head up at your house? What did you do? Was you like a tree that was planted by the waters, and its roots run deep along that river bank? And it didn't matter how fierce the storm was. It didn't matter how bad the wind blowed. It didn't matter how much it rained. It didn't how many demons showed up. You were like that tree that was planted by that river and the roots were run deep and you could not be blown. You could not, you could not and could not and will not have any dry season in your life. Does that biblical, does your trust resemble that kind of biblical trust? Amen. Whoa! You see, we are living in the, in the era, in the age of storms. Right. Storms are coming to your house. I don't care how saved you are, they're coming. Oh, but a man or woman that learns how to put their trust in the Lord, there they will receive a, a blessing. They will receive an empowerment that they will have holding power. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how dry it seems. They'll have no dry season in their life. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Okay, I can tell that excited you. <laughs> Psalms 34. Let me get this. Psalm 34 in verse number 8. Here's what David said in Psalm 34. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Yeah, Blessed is the man that trusteth in, yeah. in him. Well, now watch now, watch one, one, watch now, watch one, one. You know what trusting God is? It's a highway to continual victory yeah. in this life. Yeah. Trust becomes your highway to where you can live a continual victory in this life. 
David said, look at this, look at this. David said, who's blessed here? In Psalm 34 and 8. It's a man who what? Puts his trust in the, in the Lord. So according to Scripture, I can, I can learn what real, real Bible trust is and start operating in that. And there will be an empowerment or an anointing come upon my life. And David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, there must be some evidence that the Lord is good. If I can taste it and I can see it, there must be some evidence. Well, where does my evidence come from? Your evidence comes from your trust. Because you will be blessed in that trust. I'm going to mail this, I'm going to mail this in your coffin. You will be blessed in that trust. Trust little, you bless little. <laughs> your trust now becomes the highway that you began to live in victory in daily. Your trust level because you will be, you will be blessed. The man that puts his trust in the Lord will be blessed in that trust. The level of your trust determines the level, ah, Jesus, of your blessing and the level of the anointing and the holding power that you have when all hell breaks loose in your home. Amen. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. Man, I, I'm going to preach today. I'm going to preach to probably the 4th of July. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all got to get this today. I ain't going home this evening. Trust is a must. I can look at some of you right now, and I know right now that, that the only reason that you are here and in your sound mind is because of the trust that you had in God and, and the trust that you had in Him, you were blessed in that trust. Can I get an amen? amen? Look at verse number 2, Psalm 34, verse 22 rather. Psalm 34, look what David said. Psalm, 30, Psalm 34, verse 22. The Lord redeemed the soul of the servants, of His servants, and none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. Oh, wow. I'm going to read the Amplified. The Lord redeems the lives of His servants, and none of those who take refuge and trust in Him shall be condemned or held guilty. None of them shall be desolate, the man that puts his trust in the Lord. None of them shall be condemned and held guilty. Not one. No, not one. Oh, that trust in the Lord. They will be blessed in that, in that, in that trust. Can we get an amen? amen. I'm going somewhere. I've got to lay the foundation. Stay with me. i got to lay the foundation. Don't rush me. If you don't get the foundation, you ain't going to get where I'm going. Trust. Matthew chapter number 6. You'll find in Matthew chapter 6, verses 20, 25 through 34, that four different times Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 speaks those words. Take no thought. Take no You've been here long enough to know this. If you've been here for several months, you know this already. But where's the first place the enemy attacks you? Wow. Your mind. You can't do anything without a thought. Everything began with a thought. You can't do anything with a... The enemy comes and here's where he attacks your mind, your thought, your thought mind with suggestions and, 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 and ideas and, 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 and he, he, he comes. And, and Jesus said four different times in those few verses to take no thought. He was talking about taking no thought for your life, take no thought for what you shall eat or drink or for what you shall put on your body. He was talking about the everyday needs of life. And he said take no thought. Well, here's, here, 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 here's where I'm at with you. So, see, the only way I know that a man can do that is to trust God. Amen. I said, the only way I know that you can do that is to trust God. And if you're, listen, 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 and if you're going to get in a position to where you take no thought for your life, then you're going to have to get in a position to where you trust God. And most people are depending on their paycheck instead of God as their source. You can say amen if you want to. Hear this preacher, hear me. Most people are depending on their paycheck as their source and not God. The individual that trusts God are totally dependent upon God for their source. As their source. I'm not, I'm not depending on the, on, the, on the Republicans because they can't do it. Nor the Democrats. They can't stop fighting long enough to do anything. They can't stop arguing on them doing it. It's all about their party. All about their party. We're not in power. We're not in power. Shut your mouth and just get on the boat and shut up. Amen. Amen. The person, the individual that puts their trust in 
God, He becomes their source. Not their employer. Not their monthly check. God becomes their source. Does that describe your level of trust? David said, I was once young, but now I'm, I don't know what you say, y'all with me, I ain't old, and now I'm old. And David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed of David for dead. David knew where his source was. It wasn't in anyone but the one. That's right. Jehovah himself. Hallelujah. And if you want to bump it up to New Testament times, Paul said that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Can I give an amen? amen. Can I give a better amen? amen? Now, watch this. What? 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 Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, that's the foundation. Now we're ready to dig this thing out. Now I'm ready to preach for a while. Can I preach for a while? Yeah. Might as well say, yeah, but we'll do it anyway. Watch this. What? Now listen, listen, listen. We started, in, we started at the last part of this meeting talking about faith. How he sees you faith. Watch that. What? There's a difference between faith and trust. A lot of times we use the two together to define the other. Got me? They complement one another. They do. But they are totally different. They are T totally different. And you need to understand the difference between the two. Are you listening to me? You need to know the difference between faith and trust. There's a difference in the two. Okay? What is faith? Let's go. Look on the screen. Faith is the practical expression of my confidence in God and in His Word. Faith becomes my expression of my confidence that I have in God and in His Word. Faith now becomes my expression of the confidence that I have in God and in His Word. Amen. My faith now becomes, reveals my confidence that I have in God and in His Word. I'm not talking about your confidence, I'm talking about mine. My faith now is expressed in the confidence that I have in God and in His Word. Am I making any sense? Amen. Your faith now becomes an expression of your confidence. Well, you say you, you, you have faith. I don't doubt that you have faith. But your confidence in God and His Word begins, becomes your expression of the faith that you say you have in God and His, and His Word. Got me? Amen. How, well, how, how, how do I express my faith? I express my faith through my confidence in God and His Word. Got me? Now watch that, watch that, watch that. Whereas trust is commitment. Trust, faith is confidence... Trust is commitment. And they are two different levels. Your faith is the beginning of your Christian walk. Your faith is the beginning of your Christian walk. How do you say that, preacher? Because the Bible says in the book of Romans, Paul said that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. You've been dealt the measure of faith. Faith now is your, is your, is your beginning level when you are born again. Got me? Trust is a higher level in the Christian walk. See, I don't mess some of y'all up now. See, some of y'all know you look at me like Cagney and Dubongan. Faith becomes your beginning level because God has, God has given you the measure of faith. Trust now is a higher level than faith. Faith is confidence. Trust is commitment. Faith is confident. Trust is commitment. Faith is your beginning level. Trust 
It comes a higher level as you progress in your walk with God. How can you say that, preacher? Well, because the Bible reveals to me that your faith can fail. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I didn't say God could fail. I said your faith can fail. You got Bible for that preacher? Yeah, I do. I do. In Luke chapter number 22, Jesus is praying for Simon Peter. And notice what he prays in, in, in Luke chapter number 22. Watch that. Watch what he prayed. Watch what he prayed. Watch what he prayed. He, he, said, he, said, he, he, he said, but I have prayed for thee. Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Now, if faith could not fail, then why would Jesus pray? Why would Jesus say that he's praying that your faith would fail not. Watch, 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 what? There's only one way your faith can fail. Come to me, man. I, I, come on, come to me. Come, come, come. There's only one way your faith can fail. And that is if you begin to cast away your confidence. Hebrews 10, 35. Hebrew writer said, Cast not away therefore your what? Your confidence which hath a great recompense of reward. Faith is, faith is confidence. So if you put Luke 22 and 32 and, and, and Hebrews 10 35 together, it says this, that Jesus is praying that you don't cast away your confidence. If you cast away your confidence, faith begins to fail. And if your faith fails, you cast away your confidence. Amen. The enemy of your soul knows, knows that if you don't cast away your confidence, you can make it through any dark season of life. You can go through any 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 dark valley. You're, if he knows if he cannot shake your confidence in God, you can go through any temptation in this life if you don't cast away your confidence. What? What? When you stand and confess God's word over your life, come to me. Healing, deliverance, provision, peace. Whatever. You stand and you confess God's word over your life and you stand in faith. And if it doesn't come in a week, God forbid it take 10 days. <laughs> what do we do? We begin to let go of our confidence. Right. Come on, somebody, talk to this preacher. Amen. We, begin to let, we, we begin to cast away our, our confidence, and when we begin to cast away our confidence, our faith begins to fail. Am I making any sense? Amen. That's the way it happens. That's why we can't cast away our confidence because. Our faith is an expression of our confidence that we have in God in His Word because God sees your confidence. He sees the expression of your faith and your confidence in Him in His Word. And when we confess His Word and we, we, want, the, we want the healing, we want the miracle, we want the deliverance, we want, we, we want the provision, we, 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 want, we, we, we want God to move in this situation and, and give us what we need. And yet, if it doesn't come in five days, God forbid it, take ten days, if it doesn't come in fifteen days, we've never got what we prayed for. Mm -hmm. We've done cast away our confidence and now our faith has failed and we're not going to receive what we started out to receive. Am I making any sense? Yeah, I am making perfect good sense yeah. because faith is, your co faith is confidence, man. Wow. Can I, can I dig around this little hole? Can I? Come on, man. Y'all like like y'all bored to death. Come on. That's the preacher a little bit. Just be like a little dog in the back window. Just take your hand when you don't stand for your knowledge. Let me go to your life. Your faith can fail. Oh, help me, Jesus. I said your faith can fail. Somebody say my faith, my faith. can fail. Amen. If Amen. I cast away Amen. my confidence. Amen. 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 Are, you, are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? You know, why, you know why your confidence can be cast away? Because, listen to me, because when the contest gets heavy, oh, help me, help me go. And the contest is long and drawn out, we began to cast away our confidence. And our faith begins to fail. Now, how many of you understand that? Give me a hand. How many of you understand? How many believe that's the truth? Amen. Well, I got four of you. That's all I need four of you. 
Your faith can fail. Well, come here. Look at me. Look, 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 look. The trust. You know, gotta go now, baby. You better butt up because I'm getting ready to run this thing wide open. But trust can never be removed. Your faith can fail, but your trust can never be removed. A familiar portion of Scripture in Psalm 125, verse number 1 on the screen. If you've been here even at the time, you've seen this Scripture many times after these years. Verse, chapter 125, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as what? Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth, but abideth forever. And Provide says this. Those who trust in, lean on, and confidently hope in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abideth and stands fast forever. Look at this. Look what God is saying. Get this in your spirit. This is what you look like when you are in trust. This is what biblical trust looks like. Does your trust look like this? Does it look like Mount Zion? And you stand and say you will not be moved. I will stand and I will abide forever if I have to. When you trust in, when, you, when you're in trust, you don't care how, how heavy the conflict is. You're not going to be moved. When you're in trust, you don't care about why that didn't work or this didn't work or, or why this did and that didn't and why you got this and why you didn't get that. No, so trust is like Mount Zion. It doesn't matter whether it happened or whether it did not happen. Trust does not move. Trust is like a mountain. It's just like Mount Zion that says that stays there regardless of what happens. And the Bible says that once you get like that that the blessings of God will come and take you over because you're like a mountain that refuses to be moved. Are you in this building with me? Are you hearing me? I thought about that old song we used to sing. That old red back hymnal. Talked about, I shall not be moved. How many remember that song? That song goes, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Though all hell sell me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved. I just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. And the Bible said, and he got wind. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and would no. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Meshach, they wouldn't bow. So old King called him there. And he said, boys, is it true? You won't bow to my enemies. And old Shadrach, Meshach, and Meshach, and Meshach, and verse number 17. They said, now listen, King, ain't only us even talking about that. Because the God in whom we serve is able to deliver us from this body yeah. fire for us. And now God had no king. Oh, but I like the next few words. But if not, our position remains the same. Ah, I said, if you don't show up, our position ain't gonna change. I said, oh God, somebody needs to tell the devil, hey devil, if it don't show up, my position. 
condition remains the same. I'm still going to stay in confidence. And I'm still going to stay in my trust. Hallelujah. I, my position will not change. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Faith believes that God can do it. Trust will stand and say, even if He don't do it, my position does not change. I will remain the same. Why? Because trust, look at me, is a commitment. Oh, yeah. It's like that seed that was planted in a certain spot. And that seed that was planted in that certain spot grew into a tree. And you cannot stop that tree from bringing forth and bringing forth fruit. Because it's committed to that spot where it was planted. Good God Almighty. The seed that was planted has to stay committed to where it was planted for it to grow and bring forth fruit and bring forth and bring, bring forth the harvest in its season. Amen. You basically, look, 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 that seed became committed to the spot where it was planted. And that seed began to grow. Begin to grow. The word to see. Are you pitching it? The word to see. Plant it. Plant it. Plant it. Plant it. The first soul of your heart. The word. The word. The word. The word. Plant the first soul of your heart. The word. The word. The word. The word. Plant it there. It became committed. That seed became committed. And that seed became committed to the spot that it was planted. And before long, that seed began to grow on the tree. And before long, the tree began to bear fruit. Harvest showed up. Good God. And you can't stop the tree from bearing fruit once it's committed to. Once it's committed to the spot where it was planted, get God Almighty. The seed is His Word. The seed is His Word. I do you like it. The seed is His Word. And you plant the Word in the firm ground of your spirit, in the firm ground of your heart. And before long, the seed, if it stays committed to where it was planted, before long, the seed will begin to grow and harvest will begin to show up because that seed remained committed. Amen. Trust is commitment. Amen. Trust is commitment. It's committed to the spot it was planted. God Almighty. Trust. Trust is commitment. Somebody say commitment. 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 Trust is. You know what? You know what? You know what? Look at me. Look at me. And, and that tree. You know what's going to happen? That tree is going to be there on a sunny day. It's going to be there on a cloudy day. It's going to be there on a windy day, on a rainy day, on a snowy day. That tree is going to be there because that tree is committed. That tree is committed. And that's what trust is all about. Trust is whatever the day like. I'm going to be in God. Whatever shows up, I'm going to be in God. When that unexpected bill shows up, I'm going to be in God. You used to like me last year, but now you're talking about me. But I'm going to be in God. Oh, it used to be up, but now it's down. Oh, but I'm still, I'm going to be in God. I had a job and made a lot of money, but now I ain't got no job and I ain't got two nickels up in my pocket. But you know what? I'm going to be in God. Hallelujah. And look at this on the screen. When there is nothing on this planet, in this whole world, that can move you out of your trust with God, God said, if you'll stay in that trust, if you'll stay in that trust, I will empower you and anoint you and bless you. And if you will just trust me because you're trusting me, I will do those things. And you cannot let people move you out of your trust. I don't care if you're six foot two and eyes are blue. You cannot let circumstances move you out of your trust. You cannot let offense move you out of your trust. Because I'm working on something, man. And where there's nothing on this planet or in your life that can move you out of your trust with God, there will be an empowerment, there will be a blessing that will come from Almighty God because you trust God. And you will not allow anything or anybody move you out of your trust. Because trust is commitment. You go back to hey, look at me. You go around bragging about your trust in God. Does your trust resemble your this biblical trust? I told that. I don't know about you, but man, I got some work to do. I know some of y'all, y'all already reached that. Y'all y'all the pastor this church and didn't leave. <coughs> I done found out I got some work to do. Amen. Amen. Well, my trust sometimes don't look like it's biblical trust. Now listen, I be warning you now. Beware when you go to break and trust in God. Or what's it gonna be when the weather changes? <laughs> what are you gonna do when you get that x-ray back before? 
What are you going to do when they when they go from talking to you to talking about you? What are you going to do when they lie on you and cheat on you and steal from you and say all manner of evil about you? What are you going to do when the weather changes? Watch out now when you tell me you break on that and trust God. Are you with me? 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 He said, don't make no difference what, any, what anybody does who says about you. Ain't no make no difference. So listen, cause ain't none of that got anything to do with what he said in his word. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you trust him, you listen, listen, when you trust him, you trust him, you trust him to, to take care of it. When this, when you when you really biblical trust, you trust him when there is no pain, and you trust him when there is pain. Glory to God. Amen. You trust him when the x-ray reads negative, and you trust him when the x-ray reads positive. You trust him when they're talking about you, and you trust him when they're praising you. Amen. You trust him when you're lonely, and you trust him when you're not lonely. Ain't none of that got anything to do with what God said in His Word. Now, what happens in this natural realm ain't got a doggone thing to do to the fact that I trust God. Come hell or high water, I trust God. I trust God as my healer if everybody around me is dying. Somebody dying ain't got a doggone thing to do with me moving. I'm like Mount Zion. I, I don't mean this. If nobody becomes blessed, I'm like Mount Zion. If nobody gets delivered, I'm like Mount Zion. If nobody gets to need me, I'm like Mount Zion. I, I'm going to be like Mount Zion this year. I'm going to be like Mount Zion next year. And three years down the road, I'm going to be like Mount Zion. And 10 years from now, I'm going to be like Mount Zion. I will be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. Why? We're going to straight. Why next day? Why? Why next day, Martin? Let's go hurry quickly, quickly. Because if I, because, no, 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 no. Here, here's the reason why. Because if I stay this way, I'm not going to stay this way. You ain't in here right now, see? You ain't in here right now, see? You missed that because you're sitting there half asleep. If I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. If I, I'm going to be like Mount Zion because if I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. I'm going to God. I said if I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. If I say, oh God, if I'm like Mount Zion, hallelujah. If I'm like Mount Zion, hallelujah. If I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. Good God. I said if I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. I said if I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. Holy Ghost, let it sink into the heart. Give it to him, Holy Ghost. If I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. If I stay this way. If I stay like that. I'm going to stop now. Zion. If I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. Woo! The light just come off. If I, if I, <laughs> if, I, if I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. If I stay this way, I ain't gonna stay. <laughs> Holy Ghost, you're gonna have to slap them because they're dead on four o'clock in this house. Right? You're gonna have don't nobody call nine one one. Call me, they'll, they'll call nine. And I'm sending you people out of this building today. Are you here with me? Are you hearing me? You ain't hearing me. You ain't hearing me. You hear me? For you, listen, 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 it looks like ain't nothing happening. I, I know that. But listen to me, listen to me. Man, I'm like Mount Zion. To you, it looks like there's nothing, there's nothing prospering. But I'm like Mount Zion, man. Because if I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. Hallelujah. You know what God's looking for? God's looking for some Noah's uh, have to raise up. Uh, because when, 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 when it don't rain, after you said it would rain, Noah trusted God for 120 years for it to rain and for the flood to come. Are you listening to me? If I stay this way, I ain't going to stay this way. I know you, I know it looks like it, that I ain't gonna get well, but I'm gonna tell you something, I'm like Mount Zion. And if I stay this way, I ain't gonna stay this way. I know it looks like that I, I ain't never gonna get delivered, but I'm like Mount Zion. And if I stay this way, I ain't gonna stay this way. Can I get a witness in this house? I know it you looks like that, 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 that he's not gonna get saved. Oh, but if I oh hallelujah. Oh, but I'm like Mount Zion. I'm not 
not going to give up on that devil. I go home to him today from church. I'm not going to give up on him because if I stay like this, he ain't going to stay like that. I wish I had a witness right there. I know it looks yeah. like he ain't never going to come out of drugs, but I'm like Mount Zion. Come on, Carolyn, honey. Because if I know I stay like this, I ain't going to stay like this. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And listen to this preacher. If it looks like this thing, I believe in God for it won't come to pass. Well, I'm going to be like Mount Zion because if I stay like this, I ain't going to stay like this. I don't look like old Prince Sarver ain't never going to come, but I got news for you. I'm like Mount Zion, glory to God. Hallelujah. And if I stay like this, I ain't going to stay like this. Are you listening to me? My trust now has moved into another level with God, and I become like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. And if I stay like this, I ain't going to stay like this. Is anybody missing this preacher in this room? I done bypass your faith now. I done, I done moved to another level. We got to trust. Man. We got to get in this thing called, because trust is a must. I know it don't look like it. I know it don't look like anything coming to me. I know it don't look like it. I know it don't look like it. If I stay like this, Stay like this. She can't stay like that. If we stay, Amen. If you stay like this, he can't stay like that. Amen. If you stay like Mount Zion, if you stay like this, you can't stay like this. <laughs> good God Almighty, are we dying? I have a church every day. Amen. Bring the glory to God. That is so good. Yeah. I want to put the devil's nose in there tonight about midnight. I'm going to get up and walk before the good devil if I stay like this. I ain't going to stay like this. Good God, that's worth a hot dog right there any day of the week. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. That's worth any Fourth of July service on a Wednesday on July 4th weekend to come to and just hear if I stay like I ain't going to stay like this, devil! I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved. Somebody said, I'm not going to be moved. Amen. Anybody see the difference between faith and trust? Your faith will fail when you throw your confidence away. But trust says, good or bad, <laughs> it don't move me, man. Amen. Trust says, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. And that's the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? Amen. Me getting money this week or not getting money this week does not have anything to do with me trusting God as my provider. My Jehovah Jireh. Can I get an amen? amen. Me, getting my, my, me getting my healing this week or not getting my healing this week has nothing to do with my trusting God to be my healer, to be my Jehovah Rapha. Me getting the desires of my heart this week or not getting the desires of my heart this week does not have anything to do with me trusting God as my source. <sighs> Next statement on the screen, Marlon, let's go. I've got to hurry get out here. Whatever you place in God's hands is secure, brother. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Amen. When you put your children in God's hands and you trust God to take care of your children, I don't care what it looks like, your children are secure. Amen. When you put your money in God's hands, your money is secure. Amen. When you put your life in God's hands, your life is secure. The, the devil better not trust you. He better not, he better not lay a hand on you. You put your you put your life, listen, listen, put your life in God's in God's hand. And you, and you trust your life with Him, then your life is secure. Because the only security you've got in this old world, this is this preacher, hear me, is when you put your life in God's hands. Amen. And you trust Him. Look at me. Don't want you to miss this. To know what's best for you. Because you certainly don't know what's best for you. And neither do I. God knows a long term plan. Man. He sees the end from the beginning. You better hear this preacher. Amen. Look at me. Don't mess it up again. Don't mess it up again. If you put your hand, if you put your life in the hands of God and you trust Him with your life, you're secure. Don't take yourself out of His hand. Preach on, preacher. 
I'll just stop long enough just throw that in somebody's lap right there. You deal with it, glory to God. You deal with it. Are you, are you listening to me? Can I hurry up to get them to the... How many of you feel like you're secure? Amen. Your trust is what you're secure in. Hear me? Hear me? Amen. I'm secure. You know why? Because I put my life in His hands. And my life... Hey, hey, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say what you want to say. If you want to call eternal security, call it whatever you want to, honey. But I am secure because my life is in His hands. And I trust Him with my life. Every season, every predicament, every circumstance, everything comes my way. I trust Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what I have to do? I have to learn how to put this trust, how to put this church in His hands. I have to learn how to put this ministry in His hands. And I can tell you it's secure. Not because of me, but because I trust Him with this house. Look at me. And I've become, years ago, before I ever even knew this, I've become like Mount Zion. I just kept standing. I kept coming back. I'd see him leave, I kept coming back. Amen. Oh, you ain't in here right now. Amen. You think, you, you think this is so easy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is, buddy. Yeah, just go ahead and drink a little drink. Mm -hmm. The only reason that this ministry is still afloat because years ago I put it in his hands and I trust him with this house and this ministry and the people that come in this house I trust him because I know I can't trust myself oh I, I, I have a <laughs> oh, preacher ain't you worried about you know about the money and responsibility paying the bills that were low uh uh my trust is in God. I can rest assured everything's all is well. All is well. All is well. All, is well. all, is well. all I said all is well. I'm going to tell you something. You can rest assured on this. I do not have my trust. My trust is not in the man. <laughs> because I had many of them walk out on me. <laughs> and left me holding the note at one time. And I said, whatever, man. It's in the Lord's hands. And it's secure. Hallelujah. Look at me. Some of y'all don't know this. Let me, let me tell you. Let me give you a little history right real quick. Now I've got to get out of here. We stepped out in this place by, by faith. Down at the Bubba's Hill. By faith. Went and signed a $300,000 note. I was first one to put a name on $300,000 back in the late 90s was a lot of money. A lot of money. Oh yeah, preach, preach on, preach on, preach on, preach on, preach on, preach on. A lot of moolah on that day, buddy. And I had to grow very quickly, very, very quickly. I had to grow from faith to trust because I didn't. I had no idea what the difference was. But I had to grow from faith to trust. Amen. 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 Because I saw them begin to walk out, and I saw them begin to walk away from the obligation they made to God and to this church. And the enemy would come in in those early days of the ministry and he threatened me and tried to get me to cast away my confidence. I didn't know what I was doing, but you know what I was doing? I was like Mount Zion. <laughs> I was like Mount Zion. I would not be moved. Amen. Well, preacher, I don't believe, I don't care whether you believe it or not. You wasn't there in the early days, so you really don't know if I'm telling you the truth or not. But what I had to do, I had, I had to move, I, I had to go from faith to trust. Because I had to become like Mount Zion many, 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 many times. And I'll tell you one area that we met that, but we were that it paid off. And Brother Gary said, right on the front row, he'll, he'll get proof to this. We had a $300,000 loan that it was, it was to take 15 plus years, maybe close to 20 years. But we did it in half of that. We paid it off in half of that. You know why? Because we became like Mount Zion. It didn't matter who left, it didn't matter who came. It didn't matter who walked out, it didn't matter who came. We still were Mount Zion, glory to God. And because we refused to be moved, Brother God empowered us with an anointing from the high, and God blessed us. And now you're sitting in a house that is debt free because somebody determined in their life that they was not going to be moved, that we were going to be like Mount Zion. It doesn't matter if we've got five people, 50 people, or five. 500 people, we're going to be like Mount Zion, and we are not going to be moved by what we see, by what we hear, or by what we feel. We're only going to be moved by God and His 
word. You see, somewhere along the way, you've got to grow up. You've got to mature. You've got to go from faith to trust. Your trust has got to be like Mount Zion. If you're trusting God for something in your life, don't be moved when it don't look like it's coming about. Because you're working on something, man. You're working on something. Because you're going to be blessed in that trust. At the level of your trust, is the level of your empowerment, of your endurance of the anointing of God, of the blessing of God. If you'll stay in trust and be like Mount Zion, I'm about to have a spell. I'm telling you, God will open the windows of heaven up and begin to pour a blessing out upon you that you cannot contain. Hey, faith is your expression of your confidence in God and His Word. But trust says, whether He answers it or not today, whether it comes about or not, I'm my position remains the same. I will not be moved. I will yeah. be moved. I'm not right. Man, I don't know. I feel like I'm preaching to about five people here today, and only five people, three of them went to sleep on me. I only got two left. So I guess I'll talk to you two. Does anybody listen to this preaching? Amen. Anybody hear me? Amen. Anybody, anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. I'm telling you, what you place in God's hands is secure, man. He can be trusted. Look at me. Look at me. God can be trusted. Whatever you put in His hands, man, is secure. It's secure. But you've got to be like Mount Zion. You've got to trust in Him. And His will for your life. His will for your life. May not be your will, may not be what you want, but it's His will for your life. And you can trust Him. I said you can trust Him. I said you can trust me. <laughs> I've been making early days. I, I'm trying to hurry, get out of here. I need to come to the Bible that quick. I remember back in the early days, people come to me all the time. I mean, it was just like a it's like a broke record. And they come here another while I take you to the they say, Pastor, you better do something, this place gets smaller than number. <laughs> Whatever. Talk to the hand, man. <laughs> Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. Those that will come and be here, they'll be sanctified people, glory to God. They'll be set apart for the glory of God. Oh, somebody talk to me. And look at me. Look at me. I got a word for somebody. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Listen, listen, listen. Look at me. Look at me. Look, 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 look. Listen, you can't hang around a bunch of chickens. But you know what a bunch of chickens will do? They're going to do some crazy turn. You can't hang around a bunch of You can't hang around a bunch of chickens, man. You know what the doctor will do? You can't hang around a bunch of chickens. A bunch of chickens will talk you out of your blessing. They'll talk you from they'll talk you out of your trust in God, man. Don't hang around a bunch of chickens. Get around the people of God. Get around those that are soaring up and mount up with wings as eagles, Lord to God. And they'll run and God be ribbed and they'll walk and they'll not fade because they trust. In the God. Stay away from the chickens. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. You're really good at that. Oh. Every time they start, I say, oh. the preacher told me that I grabbed you. Oh. That's pretty good. He was smiling. She must have thought that was funny. You ever heard chicken before, baby? I just felt like, oh. You'll hear it when you grow up. Stay away from them chickens. And chickens will talk to you to move them. Will talk to me, somebody. They don't, them chickens don't know you're working on something. And if you will be as Mount Zion as they planted, where the seed was planted, as they committed to the spot, the seed will grow. The harvest will come. Stay committed. Trust. God Almighty, man, this is so good. I'm telling you, too, I'm going to stay here in the dark. Look at me. Stay away from the chickens. Mm -hmm. Take a bunch of chickens down around the handle on the egg or down the aisle. Take a bunch of chickens to a wire hole real quick. There's chickens everywhere you go. Hey, so you got chickens in your family, Robert? Yes, sir, man. Oh, you can start taking two of them over the top. Shut your mouth, chicken. She will talk you to move If you're working on something, you can't, you can't, you can't come down 
If you work on old club, you gotta be like that title. But clubs and past will come to pass. I will not change my position. I will die forever. Amen. Whether my boy is healed today or tomorrow, it is not going to change who he is. He is my healer. I declare he's my healer to the day that I die. I'm not now Zion. I'm not going to give up on my boy. I'm not going to give up on his healing. I'm not now Zion. I don't care if he's got a good five hundred more doctors. It does not. It, it does not change my mind. And yeah. Jesus being the healer of my boy's body. Hallelujah. To the way of God. I'm going to stay like Mount Zion. I'm not going to listen to all the chickens as they go to clucking. I'm not going to listen to all the naysayers and all the doubters and, and all the complainers and all the whiners and, and all the murmurs. I'm going to get away from them chickens. I'm going to find me some eagles and I'm going to soar with the eagles. For they that put their trust in the Lord, they're going to mount up with wings as eagles and they're not going to run with the chickens, but they're going to fly with the eagles, boy, and they're going to stand like Mount Zion and refuse to be moved. I will not be moved. Amen. Question. Does your trust resemble this biblical trust that we've been talking about? I didn't come here to be Christian I you. I came here to see to let you see and understand what biblical trust is all about. Faith is one thing, but trust is something else. Yeah, they complement one another, but they're totally different. They're totally different. We try to use faith and trust in the same sentence, but totally different, man. <laughs> man, I don't know if I'm doing any good here today or not. It's time to quit. I preached, I preached over an hour already. Ain't that good? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all didn't think the old man could preach that long. Honey, I could preach 30 more minutes if you want me to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at this. I'm like close this right. Look on the next screen. That's table. Let's go. I'm like Mount Zion. I will not be new. Look, 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 look. You know why? Look at me. If you, listen, look, look here. If, like, there's what will happen if you're staying in your trust. You'll trust without last the conflict. You trust without last the conflict. And when you remain in trust, look at me. You become unbeatable in the earth realm, man. You ain't in here to me. I'm not talking, I'm talking, I'm not talking to religious people. I'm talking to people who want to move forward in the things of God. You become unbeatable on the end of the earth realm. Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? You just, you just say that, ain't you? There's a lot of folk believe God, but a few people trust God. Trust is eternal, man. You hear me? Trust is eternal. I know my God can. I know He can. But if He does not, that does not change my position. That's commitment. That's commitment. Now, I don't know who I come to talk to today in this house, but I come to tell somebody, listen to me, look at me, who's about to give up, look at me! Don't cast away your confidence. Just because you haven't seen anything yet. Don't cast away your confidence in God and His Word. Don't do it. Don't do it. Look at me. I'm talking to somebody. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I heard this early this morning. Probably way before you ever got out of bed. I'm talking to somebody right now that's getting ready to compromise. Don't do it. Do not do it. You're working on something. You're working on something. Don't you compromise when you know what is right and what is not right. Trust God. And be like Mount Zion, man. Be like that tree by the waters that spread out its roots. Stand. Stand. In the face of all the adversity and in the face of everything that's going wrong. Stand. Wow. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Shake your head like this. Shake your head a little bit. Don't shake it too hard because somebody's going to shake your brain. I picture this. Picture a tree that's planted by the, by the water. And its roots run deep along the river. Do you see it? Do you see it? When all the other trees are drying up, guess what that tree's got? That's planted. Good God, it committed to what was planted. It committed to what was planted. It's green. 
its leaves to wither. Good God. And those trees along that old, along that, 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 that riverbank, they stand in all kinds of water, all kinds of weather. They stand. Because they're committed and the roots run deep. Run deep. The winds, the waves, the storms of life cannot blow them over because they're committed to the spot where they were planted. That's where your trust is. Your trust is like that tree that's planted by fire and its roots spread out all the river. Wow. That's what trust is. Trust him, man. Trust him. Father, let him see. Let him see, Lord, as they have their eyes closed right now. Let him see in their own life what they need to see about this trust. Lord, they're close to a breakthrough. Don't Holy Ghost help them, encourage them. Don't let them give up. Don't let that person compromise. No, 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 no. No. Let it be like that tree. Stay planted. Lord, husbands and wives are here. And really, they really don't know the deep, dark secret of that one of their, of their spouse that they haven't told them about the thing they're battling. But you know it. You know it. You know what they're battling. God, let them move out of faith into trust now. Today, let them begin this journey of trust. Be like Mount Zion and refuse to be moved and know that if they stay in trust, that you will bless them in that level of trust. You will bless them out of that trust that they have in you. Thank you for the Word today. Thank you for the Word today. It's helped me. If it hasn't helped anybody else in this house, it's helped me. And I, I thank you for helping me because I needed that so bad. I needed to be reminded again. I needed to be, I needed to be restored, re, rekindled again in my spirit. I needed it again. I needed to hear it again. Thank you. Thank you for blessing me. And now I made up my mind. I got a fresh touch today now. I got a fresh word. Trust is a must. Now I'm going to leave this house determined to be like Mount Zion. I'm not going to be moved now. I can make it. I can make it. Oh, Father, bless them. Help that one that's struggling right now. Holy Ghost, help them. Help them to hold on now, Lord. They got a word now to hold on to. And that one that's spiritually deaf, open their ears up in Jesus' name. Put their ears up. Let them hear for the first time what they need to do in this hour, Lord. It's a very dangerous demonic hour if we ever needed if we ever, ever, ever understood trust, we need to understand it now. Because there's so many out there that will pull us away. So many wolves in sheep clothing that will lure us away. Oh. God help us not to be like Abraham. And make an Ishmael. Help us not to get ahead of you. Help us not to create an Ishmael in our life. Help us to stay in trust. Help us to stay in trust. Trust is all about commitment. I'm not going to change my position. I trust in God. That settles it. It's final. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more little thing. Just a little bitty thing. Remember Abraham? He was a friend of God. Father of faith. hundred years old, God said he will bless you with a son in that year. Seven hundred years old. No. I've, I've envisioned that a hundred thousand times. Oh, Abe, I'm telling you this, son. 
that say in that paint that last honey you ain't gonna you ain't gonna believe it is. <laughs> but you know what the angel of the Lord told me today? We're gonna have a baby. Oh! I mean I said if she knew she oh! <laughs> Hey, man, my ears all, all shriveled up. Sarah looked as bad as he did. But there come a night when passion you went to that old ten. I say this again, no, I ain't because I wanted to get mad at me. But a man that was waiting 25 years, the Bible says he could have in faith. But I believe he moved in a level of trust. 25 years he waited on my seat. 25 years, not 25 minutes. 25 years. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I've got to get this. I have to get this out. I remember, I remember it going to mind this morning. After God gave him the promised child, promised seed, Scripture says now God's going to test Abraham because Abraham must have had more faith in the in the son and the one who gave him the son. I don't know why, I don't know why he tested him, but the one tested Abraham and he said, Abraham, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your, your, your son, your only son, and I want you to go to a place that I'll tell you where to go. And I want you to offer him there as a burn offering. Scripture says that Abraham saddled his donkey the next morning, don't hesitate, saddled it all up, got the wood on there, got the fire on there, got everything needed for the sacrifice and headed to work, to Mount Moriah. The place where Jesus was crucified, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Abraham got on that mountain, tied his son up, laid eyes on the altar, man. drew his hand back to slay his son, to take, to kill his son, because God told him to offer him up. He was right, said Abraham believed God to the place, and he was able to raise him from the dead. If he took his life, and believed Abraham had enough trust in God that God raised him from the dead. But he drew the knife back to take his life and the voice out of heaven spoke and said, Abraham, Abraham, do thou add no harm. The next three words out. Four words. For now I know. Wow. Now I know that you fear the Lord. Now I know, Abraham, that you love me more than you do your son. Now I know, Abraham, you really trust me. That's what I want to hear him say. Yeah. Now I know. You was like Mount Zion. You, you wouldn't be moved. And now I know you, you fear me and you love me. And because of that level of trust that you had in me, I'm going to bless you to that same level. Exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask for thing. God's going to do it. God's going to do it, somebody. He? Man, I'm so glad I come to church today. Amen. I don't kill the time. I don't kill the time. I don't kill I don't go beyond apologizing for time. Before you come in the doors, you know I preach a long time, so it should be something. <laughs> oh, I should apologize. People already know me. This was worth your trip today. Amen. Amen.